According to BoxRec.com, there are a lot of names that are uh, uh, getting uh, a lot of traction as far as the heavyweight division is concerned. Let's talk about how the division is at large, how it's shifting, and who are possibly the other uh, fighters that would probably make a move or uh, you know, decide that now is the time for them to really make a push for for a spot in the top three or top four. Well, you know, we're looking now. Uh, starting from the top, Usyk, who came off, it was coming off of a big upset win over Anthony Joshua, a really comprehensive victory, uh, a great fight by him. He he was a smaller man, obviously, he was a cruiserweight champion, but came in there and and just took apart Anthony Joshua. And then you have Joshua, Josh, you know, one loss or a couple losses for the guy. And you still have to say, though, he's a big draw. You know, he brings, he has a lot of fans out in the UK and, you know, people love him. And, and you know, he has accrued a lot of goodwill in the sport. And I think that um, he's always one victory or two victories away from, you know, a big win, a uh, big, just returning back to the winner's circle and, and, uh, and, and selling out a big audience. Uh, Dillian White, you know, who was the, uh, uh, the mandatory for a long time for the WBC. Uh, I, I, someone once categorized him as the best heavyweight champ, best heavyweight to never have gotten a, a title fight, a, a title opportunity. Um, but White, another uh, tough guy from the, from England, and uh, you know he's always a player. Um, Joe Parker, you know Joseph Parker from New Zealand. Um, he was a, a title holder, kind of an enigma. You know, it's, it's you know he's he's got good boxing ability, but. Sometimes it's to figure out what, what he is. Is he a good boxer? Is he a puncher? I think he has to figure out within himself what his identity is. And then Michael Hunter, you know, um, a little bit smaller, you know, maybe more of a, maybe more of a cruiserweight or closer to a cruiserweight, uh, small heavyweight. That's kind of his issue, but um, very talented guy. And, uh, you know, he, he, he pull, he's gotten to that point by pulling off a lot of upsets. And uh, I think when he gets bigger opportunities, we've probably not seen the last of his upsets. You know, the, the for 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 uh, with, with the the last uh, from from uh, the, the number three all the way to number six, so, which uh, is occupied at present by Andy Ruiz, all of them in the last six fights never really registered five wins and a loss. Now, with with a last six fight record like that, how much how how much does that play in 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 the race or in in your chase for for let's say a title fight? Well, for me, what that tells me is when you're in a kind of deep division, you know, or talent, you know, rich division, uh, and you have a loss, that means you're fighting good fighters. Uh, so uh, that's just inevitable. Like Dillian White, uh, he had a his his loss was against uh, Alexander Povetkin, um, you know, who was a gold medalist, and and uh, he was winning every second of the fight until Povetkin landed one of the greatest one punch knockouts I've ever seen. Uh, Anthony Joshua's two losses were Usyk and, and Andy Ruiz. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, jo Joseph Parker, I, I believe if I'm correct, his loss was actually to Derek Chisora, I believe. Um, you know, uh, and, and Chisora is a very strong, you know, aggressive fighter, and he's been in there. I remember Chisora, you know, he's rated there. He had one of the most iconic knock um iconic weekends for me when he fought vitaly klitschko he fought the top three heavyweights in the same weekend in the same night really because he went out there he spits water in vladimir klitschko's face right before the fight and then he gives vitaly klitschko a great run for the heavyweight championship you know in, in a losing effort and then at the post fight um uh, uh press fun. conference he um he has a brawl with um with uh david hay and I think one of David Hayes' guys actually hit him with a bottle and still didn't knock him out. Hit him with a glass. You glossed me, Mike. You glossed me. You know, and yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, Chisora is an icon. And then uh, and also because he's such a big, tough guy with the cutest little dog. And it's just like, doesn't make sense. <laughs> the, dog, the dog plays in to the mystique, right? The dog plays it, in. That, right? That's what makes him scary. You know, he's a, this, this big, scary tough guy you know who's a really the badass fighter and he's got a little like pocket dog so i don't know um yeah you know I, th that just shows you how how tough the division this is these are shark infested waters right and 
I uh, literally anyone can lose. And if you lose, it's I, I don't hold it against you. I don't believe that makes you a terrible fighter. Um, I think that just means you're fighting good fighters. You know, in this list of 12 people that uh, we, we, we put up according to uh, boxrec.com, there are four guys from the UK, four guys from the United States, one from New Zealand, one from Bulgaria, and one from Germany. What's the, what, what's that, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that uh, boxing has become like this, um, you know, very globalized sport. You know, it used to be that, of course, the heavyweight champions from America. Where else would he be? You know, and uh, and, and instead now we have um, contenders from all over the world. Um, I remember, I think it was Max Kellerman who mm -hmm. said, what are you talking about um, American heavyweights are still dominating. They're dominating basketball. They're dominating, you know, NFL football. But boxing, you know, because all those all the athletes are are going to these other sports, um, you know, you're seeing the opportunity for athletes from other countries like you know Germany and you know and and, and Bulgaria and mm -hmm. Belarus uh, to to rise up, you know, and fill that void. Uh, so yeah, no, boxing is a, a global sport now, and um, you know the heavyweight champion. You know, I, I remember it was so exotic, you know, that you know. Ingemar Johansson was a Swedish guy, you know, became heavyweight champion. You know, we, we talk about it. We get the heavyweight champions are from America. Now it's a rarity. Like, what? We have a heavyweight champ from America? How weird is that? Like, Deontay Wilder, you know, really came out of nowhere in that regard. Like, I mean, this was a guy who was playing basketball. And I remember he told me his first job was at Burger King. And then he decided he wanted to become a boxer. Um, you know, if you're a quality athlete, you know, and you have an ability to, you know, really do something, you know, in, in sports, you, you know, basketball, football, those sports are going to try going to pick you up, uh, you know, in America before you can get to boxing. And, uh, you know, it's really a rarity, you know, like it's, it's usually someone who slips through the cracks, like Deontay Wilder, who becomes, you know, a heavyweight champion in America. So with, with this list that we have, uh, this 12 names that we've listed here, who uh, just pick one? Who among these guys? Uh, I'm talking about people below number six, below Andy Ruiz. We talk about Derek Chisora, Kubrat Pulev, Murat Gassiev, Joe Joyce, Luis Ortiz, or Ajit Kabayel. Who among those names would re really make a push maybe the next four to six months? Four to six months? I mean, it's tough to say. Joyce, maybe. Um, I think Joyce is going to have some momentum behind him because. You know, he he was the silver medalist in 2016, but after this recent uh, investigation into, you know, the perpetually corrupt Olympic boxing scoring, mm. uh, it, it turns out that he probably should have gotten the decision against Tony Yoka of France and been the gold medalist. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to... I, I, I know that a, a, an independent commission had just said that, uh, or just uh, released a report that that fight was uh, was uh, subject to fight fixing and mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, the decision should have gone the other way. I don't know if the IOC is going to now say, okay, well, we're going to give the gold medal now to uh, mm -hmm. Joyce. If, if, but I think that this news will give him some momentum. Uh, mm -hmm. It will, you know, when it, you- It'll it's, boost his stock. It'll actually boost his stock if he does get the decision. It will. I don't think it'll make him a different fighter because I think yeah. Joyce's problem is he's kind of slow, mechanical. But um, and then the last time he, you know, he fought, he, you know, he's the juggernaut, but he had this weird helmet that made him look like uh, one of those Goomba uh, bad guys from Super Mario. <laughs> Very unusual. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, but that aside, I think. Statement, maybe. Was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, maybe he was thinking he could wear the helmet into the ring and, and like and and, and like protect from punches. Uh, but I would say Joyce uh, probably just because um, I think I think he has a, I think he has a chance now to make a move. He's a little bit older, but you know, um, I think it's his, it's his time now. Uh, and otherwise, uh, Murat Gassif, you know, still relatively young. He was a big puncher as a cruiserweight. I think he's still a decent puncher as a heavyweight. And uh, I want to see what he does because. This was a guy that put uh, Usyk on his uh, uh, on uh, on the bicycle. Oh. Usyk knew not to take any chances with him.